wonder what you need if you want to start making your own greeting cards? Hi, I'm Jessica Taylor from Ink It Up with Jessica, and I've been making my own cards for over 25 years now. And in this video, I'm going to tell you my top 10 card making tools for beginners, or anyone who doesn't have them yet. Here's just a little peek at some of them. The number one most important tool is a good paper cutter. This is the Stampin' Up! Paper Trimmer, and what I love about it is that it has a cutting blade and a scoring blade. So you're going to be able to cut your paper and score it to make card bases, fun fold card bases, all the things you need to make. The darker blade cuts and the lighter blade scores. Tool number two is the bone folder. This can be used to add a nice crease to your card bases. So I can fold this on the score line and then give it a nice good crease with a bone folder for a nice card base. This can be used for a number of other techniques. You can use this tip for making other score lines. Sometimes you might want just to use a ruler to make a score line. Usually if you're doing like on an angle or some you have a bigger piece of paper than it can fit in your paper trimmer. But I mostly use it for giving my card base a nice crease. And then you can also use it to rough up the edges of your cardstock, which is a fun technique if you, especially if you don't have very many tools or supplies. The third tool is paper snips. These are great little scissors for any time you need to trim something. Or if you want to cut out a curved shape or cut out a stamped image, sometimes I use the tips of these to pick up embellishments and place them on my card as well. They're just really handy to have in your craft supplies. The fourth tool is called a silicone craft mat, and it's just this little mat that's very pliable that I use every time I'm going to add tape to something. So whether I'm using glue or a double-sided tape, I put my cardstock down on this little mat so that when I add my adhesive, if I get any on here, it'll wipe right off, clean up super easy. But if I get it on my stamping surface, sometimes it can make a real mess. So this is a great tool for that. Also, sometimes when I'm stamping, if I put my cardstock on this silicone mat, it doesn't move around. If I put it on a flat surface, sometimes it, it really moves around when I'm trying to stamp on it. So this will keep your cardstock or papers stuck in place a little better. The fifth tool is actually a number of clear blocks for stamps. So most stamps these days need to be mounted so that you can use them. Clear blocks come in a variety of sizes, but my most used side is definitely the, this D block from Stampin' Up. And you can order any of these tools that I'm talking about in this video from my online Stampin' Up! store, and I'll put the link in the description below. So you can get a wide variety of different sizes of clear blocks. You can get a bundle so that you have them in all different sizes when you need them. When you're just starting to purchase stamps, for the most part, the size D will be perfect. But as you get larger stamps, you're going to need larger blocks. If you're ordering your supplies from Stampin' Up, they tell you along with the stamp set what clear blocks they recommend. The number six tool is the Simply Chamois. This can be used to clean your stamps. It's just a purple is what it starts out as, a light purple. And then you get it wet and then you can just wipe your stamps right off on it. You can rinse it off in between uses so you can get the extra ink out and then it's perfectly good to use again. I keep mine in a stamp case and I don't actually close it all the time, but somehow by just keeping it in the stamp case, it keeps it a little bit more damp so that it's ready when I want to use it. You still, it will dry out and you'll need to get it wet on occasion um, for sure, but this is just how I clean my stamps. Tool number seven is the Take Your Pick tool. This has double-ended tips for a lot of different uses. This spatula tip, sometimes if I glue something down where I don't want it, I can take this spatula tip and kind of just work it underneath there to gently peel up that layer of paper. You can also use it to pick up embellishments. Some work better than others, but if you can get kind of underneath there, you can pick up embellishments like that to put them on your card. 
And then this other end here, I think works even better for embellishments like these iridescent rhinestones. It's got putty on it. So if you, you can pick up the embellishment and then the sticky side is down like that. So you can place it on your card. You can get replacement putty tips if you need them. On this end, if we take out the spatula, there's also a paper piercing tool. And then you kind of saw how I took that in and out. You can do the same with these two different sizes of stylus. Stylus are used, usually used for um, scoring lines. And sometimes you can do dry embossing with stencils. I don't use the stylus very often. I use the other tools a lot more. So let's talk about this paper piercing end. That works well with tool number eight, which is the Stampin' Pierce mat. This will protect your work surfaces as you use the paper piercer. So you can use this to poke holes. There are templates that you can get if you want to poke your holes in a super straight line, which I just eyeballed that and did not do great. But sometimes you wanna punch a hole to place a brad in it. Sometimes you just want some decorative circles. For whatever you want, that is the paper piercing end. The other nice thing about the stamp and pierce mat is that if you're getting a hard time getting a good stamped image, sometimes if you put this underneath your cardstock that you're stamping on, you get more of an even pressure and ink coverage. So you can get a better stamped image if you have this underneath your cardstock. Another thing that's great for underneath where you're stamping is grid paper. This will protect your surface while you're stamping, and these grid lines make it really easy to either line up your stamps where you want to stamp them, but also your paper layers. So when you want to have different layers of paper lined up on your cards, this will help you to make sure that they're straight. You can keep the whole grid pad together and just stamp right on top of it if you want to. Then you just, when this piece gets dirty, you just peel it off and go to the next one. Number 10 is a stamp positioning tool. This is the only tool that you can't purchase in my online store because Stampin' Up! no longer carries one. The two that I use the most are the Stampamajig, which has been around forever. Maybe, maybe you just happen to have one or someone you know has one stashed away. If so, pull it out and I'll share a video that shows how you use this because this is one of my most used tools when I am stamping with red rubber stamps. This really helps you to stamp your image exactly where you want it. It can also be used with clear stamps, but clear stamps, you can see more where you want to stamp them. So those are just easier in general. The second stamp positioning tool that I use is called the Mini Misty. This comes in a larger size, but this mini one I use all the time, especially for stamping the greetings on the inside of my cards. I often will put a piece of white cardstock on the inside of my cards. And so I'll do a bunch at the same time. I'll just put my greeting stamp in here and then it will stay in the same place. I know that I can put my cardstock in the corner and then stamp my greeting on a bunch of them. It really fast to make a stack of cards at once. This can also be used with red rubber stamps. You just need to take out this little foam piece, but you leave it in if you're gonna use it with clear stamps. Now, of course, you're also going to want stamps, ink, paper, adhesive, and other consumables like embellishments. But these were the 10 basic tools that you can invest in and use for years. So if you missed any of them, go back and watch this video again for the 10 card making tools for beginners or anyone who doesn't have them yet. Happy card making!